Bahia, Portugal. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings the bell and the members show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you gumpers. Hola, bon dia, alegria, Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal show, live stream and podcast. No, the on-air light is not on in the background. Wait there, wait there. I'm just going to go and turn it on. Some tea time. I wonder if the headphone cable is long enough. Let's see. Oh, ow. oh what could possibly go wrong? Ah, the stick's in the way, Mrs. M. I can't get the party. Ah, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. What a professional. Okay, that's it. That seemed very important to me. Jimmy Choo's come to the window as well. Okay, all right, that's it. That's better. Well done, everybody. Good morning, everyone, from Nuno Mendes is here from Winsurance. Great job last night on the Dream Team, Nuno. And what a beautiful weekend. Um, it looks like it's turning into here. Bon fin semana here in Portugal. Yeah, great Dream Team session last night, Gilda Daniel. And uh, Steve Flack was there from Spartan FX as well. Great evening. And that was after the uh, driver's license exchange in Portugal session with the ACP as well, um, which was great. Uh, really informative. It's very complicated. And that I just got out of breath turning the on-air light on. What's wrong with me? Need air, not on-air. Well, uh, that will be on the Expats Portugal YouTube channel from around 6 o'clock on Sunday. The good news being, um, if you are under 60 and you're American, you don't need to exchange anymore. Um, this, it's quite complex, and there's some good news. And it does get a bit complicated if you're over 60, which, to be fair, a number of um, our community are. that Our demographic uh, would mean that there is a little bit of extra paperwork to do, and the ACP can help you to do that. Um, ask and Gilda, but um, the uh, the overwhelming takeaway, uh, as, as well as it being an overwhelming process in many ways with all the pieces of paper you need, is that you will have to wait for IMT. Nobody can really um, make that uh, huge organization move any faster than it wants to. So uh, that's what you're still waiting for. But there have been changes. It's complex. There have been changes. ACP can help with that. And uh, you can have a look at the information they shared with us from 7.30 last night on the YouTube channel from 6 o'clock on Sunday. Next Thursday evening, we're talking to a life coach. That'll be fun, talking to a life coach, a new life coach who's joined the team over at Expats Portugal. And uh, they will be sharing with us their insight on uh, how to move successfully perhaps gracefully, to Portugal. How are you doing this morning? Lots of comments already. That's fantastic. Ruta Neto is here. Hello, Ruta. How are you? Ruth. Um, good morning to you, James. A lot of shouting going on there between um, James and Nunu there. See you in a few hours. Excellent. Gumpers meeting Gumpers. Coach Turner's in. And uh, Deagle also. Let's have a quick uh, weather report from Belfast. Shall we bond here, Carl and Gumpers, from a wet Belfast but yesterday went to 16 degrees, was a very warm, but, but, but very grey. You actually felt like we might get warm weather this summer for a few weeks. 20s to 23 uh, would be beautiful. Peda also in. Hola, bon dia, Portugal, from Michael Barton. Happy Friday. Hola, bon dia, everyone. And uh, keep those comments coming in, please, in the chat, if you will, and send pictures and messages to 913-590-303. I'm about to send out the uh, Portuguese language and culture foundation course message uh, for this morning in just a moment i'll do that i'll probably do that live on the show thank you so much everybody who had a go yesterday um with a simple hola bon dia bon tardo bon noite and uh, we had some great results people we're starting with baby steps um, i think uh, sometimes people get a little bit um, overwhelmed 
uh, with Portuguese and the Portuguese language. So we're taking baby steps. It's a very simple course. I'm not a Portuguese teacher, but I do encourage people to learn. And uh, we're doing an experiment. And a thank you to everyone who's taking part in that. I'll send the next assignment out. Um, I think um, maybe after we've spoken to Colleen King Showalter from Portugal, the place, we're going to have a quick chat with Colleen to find out if Portugal is still the place in her estimation. And of course, our big guest today, it's a uh, fellow man of Friday. It's going to take time learning Portuguese. Friday. I get it confused nearly every day. Friday. How do I know which verb is okay? Friday. Practice those words so loud and clear. Friday. On a in a Friday, it's a day of cheer. Friday. Trips for Brits at gmail.com. Nice harmonies, Owen. Muito bem. We're hoping to get some of that after nine o'clock this morning. So stick around and we'll be talking to Philomena. Anything you want to know about the Portuguese language or culture. Uh, and we'll be looking at the words uh, isto, isso, esta. And uh, so uh, what are they? They Are they, um, what would they be? What type of, grammatically speaking, are they adverbs or are they what are they then we'll find out we'll ask uh, Philomena that'll be the first question I ask her and the opening meme this morning have you got a picture of yourself at, in around 1973 or 1974 uh opening not really a meme a photograph of Philomena look that's her before the carnation revolution and we'll show the picture we'll show the before and after pictures a little bit later on but uh, loving that picture and I thought to myself well why don't we See if we can find a picture of ourselves from 1973 74. If you've got a picture of yourself on April the 24th, 1974, that'll be perfect. Otherwise, anything um, in that previous year. And what did we look like before the Carnation Revolution here in Portugal? Even if we were miles away in America, in the UK, in Canada, Australia, wherever. And to be fair, we probably hadn't heard. Who, who who among us here this morning had heard of the Carnation Revolution before you came to Portugal? It's probably unlikely, unless you're a um, geopolitical student of some sort. But um, what a delight to find out about the Carnation Revolution upon arriving here in Portugal. Learning out more about that when Philomena arrives and, of course, answering your questions about the Portuguese language and culture. Feel free, if you haven't got a very good memory... <laughs> to put them in the chat now if you want to you don't have to wait until nine o'clock bon dia portugal from joao de norte how are you doing joao good to see you here this morning and uh, thank you for taking part uh, in the new foundation course and camilla the insurance team are here this morning Ruth and camilla here bon dia happy friday everyone that's nice getting some feel good friday vibes at the uh, Winsurance office this morning. Okay, we'll bring that uh, picture back a little bit later of Philomena. Talking about temperatures, as Deagle was, Dougie's in the country. What's the first thing you do when you land in Portugal? Or what do many people do? Have a nice Imperial by the beach, take in the view and feel that heat on your face. He said yesterday it got up to 35 degrees with a bit of sea breeze in the Algarve yesterday. Really that warm? Don't doubt you for one moment, Doug. I'm sure it felt like that if you, if you were landing from Wales. Pedder, a fellow Welshman, Doug, is in Portugal at the moment. Look, he's down there in the south. Beautiful sunset pictures that he's sending to us, I think, from the night before last. Thanks for those, Doug. And we will have a little bit of a two-minute tasting action with Doug and get him on the dog and bone, I think, from time to time while he's here in Portugal. Watch out for his column. He has a mighty column, not unlike myself in the English-speaking Portuguese press. He in the Portugal News, me in the Portugal Resident. And I think that's out uh, this week. Again, talking about learning Portuguese. Right, God Squad tip of the day. Then let's go see what uh, Coach Turner has been up to and telling us this morning. Bon dia, Malta, off to market, says back Andy, but obviously not until I've trimmed my hedge. What? What's he talking about? Um, Coach Turner then in at 7.38. Bon dia, Gampus, estamos colocando or Sesho na Sesta Fire tidying the garden today. You trimming your hedge as well this morning, Coach Turner, after winter, as all the plants are beginning to grow and need their space. But first, coffee. Well done. God's God tip of the day then. Having concluded that it doesn't matter how much you exercise, how about eating? 
It doesn't matter how much you exercise. Was it? Oh, you don't have to do too much. How about eating? Certainly, it's never good to do a vigorous workout straight after a meal. I would normally allow at least a couple of hours. I also find I need an hour to recover afterwards. Well, before I can eat. What are you eating? However, um, five steaks. It sounds like you're a, a lion. It's like the head of your of your pride feasting on a wildebeest and then needing to lie down for three days. However, a gentle walk after a meal can help the digestive system. Of course, what a good idea. Constitutional, I think that's called, isn't it? Finally, don't forget to hydrate well during exercise if you're feeling thirsty. It's too late. That's a good little tip, isn't it? If you're thirsty, it's too late. Keep sipping. Yeah, I saw that. My, my coach, Henry, my other coach, Henry, I eat meat and I sip water all day. It's quite a good uh, little... <laughs> If you like meat, that's a nice little formula, isn't it? And he works out, of course, as you can see, um, if you see a picture of, of a hen dog. Uh, bon dia, Gumpers. Feliz sexta a from James. Como esta? Todo bem? Yes, of course. I'm going to send that because that is today's homework. So let me just send a message off to everyone who's doing the foundation course this morning. There you go. That's into your inbox now with a nice little assignment for today. And let me also, I'm going to do a little pronunciation on that uh, while we're about it. Uh, let's find that on my phone this morning. And uh, hola, bon dia. Hola, bon dia. Lovely to talk to you again this morning. Here's your assignment for today with a little bit of a pronunciation. It's not as British Dave in Portugal would say, to do bam. The, uh, it's a nasal sound on the bang. So, to do bang, to do bang. Not to do bang, as Portuguese says. That was great fun yesterday with the Portuguese, wasn't it? But we're live on the show, everybody. And today, Add to your hola bon dia or your hola botar or your hola bon night. See what happens. See what trouble you can get yourself in. Bon fin semana. Ciao, ciao. Right, that's gone off. Um, let's have a look. We've got, oh, no, what's happening? Oh, no, we're not going to see uh, Philomena this morning. She's got a bit of an emergency. Uh, she'll catch us later. Right, okay. We will do our best to have a bit of Feel Good Friday fun. And I'm sorry to hear that, uh, Philomena. Just got that message just in there. We will delay our session on learning Portuguese with Philomena. And lots of love to you, Philomena, there. And, um, okay, thank you for that message as well, Nuno. Much appreciated. And uh, anything else that's come in on 913-590-303? Need to connect with you, Jackie. Is Jackie in yet this morning? Okay, we'll probably have a look at the papers. And if uh, you can join me this morning and um, you fancy being on the screen, if you thought to yourself, I could chat with that Munson about my time here in Portugal, I'd love to do that. Today might be the day. Sadly, we're not going to be talking with Philomena um, this morning. So um, we'll catch up with her another time. And maybe it's you that will be our guest this morning on the Good Morning Portugal show. Um, I can send you a link and you can join me on screen. Mindful moment then. The world will ask you, who are you? Who are you? You. And if you don't know the answer to that, the world will tell you. Carl Jung, how about that? But a Carl Jung first thing in the morning. And a mindful dad joke. People keep mistaking my wows for compliments. <laughs> That's brilliant. Try it today. Wow. <laughs> right, okay. Have we got uh, images from you as well, James, this morning? I'm not sure I saw anything from you this morning, young James. Um, I wonder. Maybe nothing for you um, then this morning on that note. Um, and James, going to miss the show today. Everyone's leaving me this morning. Go and miss the show today. Off to Lisboa. Sorry to miss Philomena, but I'll catch the rewind later. Bon fin de semana. Uh, yeah, all y'all there. Okay, excellent. Have a great weekend. Bon fin de semana to you. And uh, we had that weather report from Deagle in Belfast. And he's also uh, sending us an additional message to remember uh, everyone, to use an umbrella, guarda chuva, it's going to rain in Belfast. Some people walk in the rain, others get wet. Oh, very good. Um, Pedder also in from Wales this morning. Bon dia, how are you doing, Pedder? Did you find that helpful last night, the webinar? Happy Friday from Michael Barton, of course, and the Ruta. And Owen's here, of course. No, not that one. Oh, my goodness. I think I'm going to have to get a big jingle board, make it a bit easier for myself. That, sorry if that woke you up, <laughs> that one there. And, of course, the um, voice of Owen. 
Where is he? That's the man. And Jackie, yes, please um, reach out to me via WhatsApp, 913-590-303, Jackie. And uh, we'll get you started on the um, basics, the baby steps, the the single daily action to learn more about Portuguese, the language and the culture um, with me every day for the next, what now, 26 days to go on that. Let's give her a nice big round of applause and bring her onto the screen because Colleen King Showalter is here. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, to the way. How are you this morning? I am happy, 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 sitting in a sunshine ray, just uh, getting ready for a great Friday. Oh, did you do this last time? I think you did, Colleen, didn't you? Didn't you bring sunshine with you from Alcabasa when we last spoke? I think so. I think so. Maybe it's me. I wish I could say that, except for the last <laughs> month have been completely raining, so I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> uh, do you know what? That's going to be a dim and distant memory soon, isn't it? All that cold and rain that we had. <laughs> oh. We so easily forget that here, don't we? When we've had the sun on our backs for a couple of days here in Absolutely. Portugal, all will be forgiven. And uh, I can't wait, quite frankly. Um, so what's going on? Is uh, Do you know what? This is what I'm going to ask you when, when we meet. Is Portugal still the place? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> absolutely. No hesitation, no doubt. It is the place for me, and I hope the place for many others. So it is um, not disappointing. Frustrating at times, but not disappointing. That's a pretty good review. I think I think Mrs. M says that about me as well. Frustrating. <laughs> Yes, that is my husband review, I think. Frustrating sometimes, but not disappointing. I think you just... <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you very much for that. Um, so, so what's what's new in your world? And that incredible team you've got over there in El Cabasa. Yeah, well, you know, we're just straight out busy. We have a lot of people that are relocating right now. It's a great time to come and scout. Uh, this is the time of year when you still have space. You know, the summer isn't here. So people can see and feel and get involved without being in the crush of tourism. So it's the time everyone wants to be here in Portugal. So we're we're keeping it going. And right now we have a absolutely exciting uh, tour that we're doing. We talked about it last week a little bit and just wanted to let everyone know we're doing another webinar tonight uh, that is getting a bunch of women that live in Portugal together. We are going to chat online, uh, answer questions, and just be available to folks that might be wondering what it's like to live here in Portugal. So yeah, Women to Portugal. It's uh, coming up. Uh, we are sending this out early. And I know it sounds early, right? December 2nd to the 9th. But you yeah. know what? That's not that far away. And oh, stop it, Colleen. It's not. It's not. And if, and, and if you want to get good plane tickets and you want to have an opportunity oh, yeah. to um, really get yourself uh, set up to be here, this is the time to reserve your spot and yes. prepare and take a look. Because when you do the math on your fingers, it's like, oh, December's not that far away. So. I know. But you, you know, you've upset me now. You brought the sunshine. You brought sunshine. I'm thinking, oh, uh, uh, do I need to panic <laughs> about Christmas presents already? <laughs> Not quite yet, but if you are getting ready to, to consider your trip and you're thinking about moving to Portugal in 2025, this is a great uh, opportunity. But we need to be thinking about it now because plane tickets go fast. And Portugal at Christmas time, oh my oh, gosh, yes, the lights, we, right? Like, I think it's the last three years now, certainly the last two, we've been doing light up Christmas. Um, and I think the first one started, yeah, I think it was sort of pandemic times when they were, you know, when there was that suggestion that Christmas might be cancelled. And it was like, yeah. I, I, it was a red rag to a bull for me. It's like, no <laughs> way. Fair enough. All this other, these other capers have gone on, but you are not taking Christmas away. Not here in Portugal because it's so beautiful here, isn't it? In, in it's Portugal. so underappreciated too. We had no idea how much the Portuguese do to celebrate the holidays and they right. light it up. And and then you're not freezing also when you're outside enjoying it. You're not, uh, I went to Budapest this last year in uh, December and it really reminded me how comfortable and uh, you know, easy it is to be out and about in Portugal because I tell you what, I... I was cold. Budapest was like a whole other level of cold. Yeah, well, that, I'd never thought of that. Yeah, it's a mild, a mild Christmas, really, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit chilly. It's, it's a colder time of year in Portugal, but still, yeah. um, you can be out and about. Have a hot it's wine. It's really right. You get the hot wine, the hot chocolate. You put a little scarf around. You get to look cute. Like your you photos see. look great because you put a scarf on. You look Russian like hat, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In Budapest, our pictures are all like this. We're just like <laughs> eyes. 
<laughs> just dies. <laughs> right, that's amazing. Yeah, okay. So, and that might be very nice for your delegates as well, mightn't it, too? You know, that's a little bit of an upside, as well as finding out about uh, Portugal. And as yeah. you said last week, 80% of your clients are women, I think you said. And yes. if you want something done, ask a woman and ask a busy woman at that. And this is a chance for those busy women who are organising things, who want to find out what's going on here in Portugal, to come over. And they will find out a lot. They've got a lot of information but they'll have yes. a lovely Christmas tree. I mean, it's almost like a Christmas present to themselves, isn't it? You'll be looking after their every need, won't you? Absolutely. They're going to have all of the professionals, all their questions answered. They're going to have folks that are doing and living the life that they're considering living, you know, that they're looking at uh, available to talk to. And then we're going to do location scouting. We're going to explore. We're going to come into your neck of the woods, San Martino de Porto and that whole area. We're going to have all of these different levels and elements that you need when you're considering the move. And then it's all set during the magical Christmas period of time. And you're going to go step outside your hotel and it's just lights and the scent of chestnuts roasting on an open fire. No joke. That happens. It does. And it does. It's, it's just the combination. It's one of my favorite times of the year in Portugal and it Lisbon in particular is just magical I believe during that time so so it's like come on over check it out if you want to reserve a spot and get yourself prepared this is the way to have everything you need and we're doing a month once a month meetups so everyone that signs up will have a scheduled once a month meetup before the event so you'll know people you'll be oh, connected kind of all of that so there's a lot to be included beyond just the actual event on those dates You'll be making friends already then, because that's really helpful, isn't it? And you'll have um, a, a, a friendship group. Uh, yeah. I mean, th th this, this is what I've noticed happens. If people start working together before they arrive in Portugal, they will obviously have their scouting trip together. And then they will know each other when they arrive, won't they? And they'll have a friendship group already and a, and a support group. I mean, it's social and it's emotional as well, isn't it? Absolutely. And then you start to see other people that are like minded and the questions in your mind don't seem so big. Right. Because all of a sudden when everyone's kind of mulling them over or thinking, can I do this or can I do that? People collaborate. Conversations start. And I think you just start to build that confidence. And yes. really, at the end of the day, we're offering this because of that. We want to provide a space for confidence and the fact that it is possible and not only educate, but demonstrate. And that's what we're doing. We are the people living the life that a lot of folks are trying to get to and we want to show folks that it's possible yeah uh, can i can i uh, keep you here for a few more minutes because that, that you've 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 you you've reminded me of something that i think is very important there the the you know we're living here you're, you're you know you, the people coming over will be meeting you the people who mm -hmm. live here mm -hmm. and there's something about the human mind that familiarizes things do you are, you are you are you with me on this it's like you know when there comes a time doesn't it which like uh, well here i am you know this is my normal life in portugal now and you kind of, it's a bit like date night, isn't it? You have to intervene on yourself and your familiarity and the normality to yes. re rekindle the magic of being here in Portugal. And that's easy to do because let's face it, there are loads of great experiences that if you have got a little bit blasé and familiar with the country, you can very easily have a great experience and remind yourself why you're here. We, there, there is something we could do like that, isn't there? Like a, you know, like a, a Portuguese date day to just remember that it's not all about crossing the line with all the bureaucracy and dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Take time out to enjoy your life now you've made it here in Portugal. I absolutely agree. It's interesting because you don't have to do, it's it's the same as like, you know how if, I always equate the process of moving to Portugal to planning for a wedding or a marriage. And it's right. the same as sustaining a relationship. It's very similar. You don't have to do the massive gesture on Valentine's Day to appreciate Portugal. It can be walk down one street that you don't normally go down. Mm. Look at the architecture that is around the corner that is the rundown ruin that at first you pass by because it doesn't really uh, have anything to give you, right? There's no shop or anything. But if you stop and look at the architecture, why did they build it that way 100, 200 years ago? What was the story behind it? Who were the people that lived there? It starts opening up your mind to the place that you live and the rich depth history here. That's the, the piece that speaks to you. We live in a, in a beautiful little town, but there are still streets and corners. We've been here for years and I still go around a, a corner and I'm like, I've never noticed that before. Or this is really cool. You don't have to make massive trips. You don't have to spend lots of money. You can rekindle that relationship by just taking a moment to notice what's to your left. Maybe yes. you 
to the right. And that's that's for me what what we all should be doing, right? Wherever you live. I agree. Be- I agree. Yeah. And and it, I mean, it's, I guess it's human nature, isn't it? To for, You know, we want to feel safe. And that's part of that whole psychological process, isn't it? It's to make everything normal and routine. And some of the magic can get lost in that process. So what a great idea um, yeah. to be a bit more mindful and scratch the surface again and, um, yeah, realize the depth and beauty of Portugal and why you came here in the first place. Um, complacency is one of the biggest things we have to be aware of in right. any part of our life. If we if we get complacent and we sit still and we don't do anything, you can do that anywhere. People pick up and they move all the way to Portugal. And then I watch them after a couple of years go right back into the routine they had before. They're, they're not going out as much. They're not getting it. And that complacency, that comfortableness, you have to be yeah. comfortable with being uncomfortable and kind of go back out there and re reintroduce yourself to why you came and made this giant move in the first place so it's very, very good analogy so yes the the, the planning part and the the, the the you know the hatching the plan and making the plan happen that is like the wedding isn't it yes and then of course you know as any good as any good uh, celebrant priest vicar whoever it who, whoever coaches you on the marriage will say this is the big day but Fingers crossed, there'll be a few years after this, and that's when the hard work can begin. And that's and, you, and there are things to do, aren't there, to keep the love and the magic alive? And it's the same with moving to Portugal. It is. It's like don't go to bed angry, right? That's the advice at least. <laughs> <laughs> if you've had, you know, if you've had bureaucracy driving you crazy and you're frustrated, you yes. know. Try- Try to take another look, go outside, appreciate the space you're in, the view you have, the people around you. Don't go to bed angry with with. Really, that is anything. such good advice, isn't it? Go to bed with the warm glow of Portuguese wine in your belly. That- <laughs> well, I didn't say wine. I was like, I did. <laughs> I'm saying okay. that. That's or- a really great way to kind of smooth out the edges. <laughs> go to bed with a taste of custard on your tongue. You know, there come you on, go. let's, let's yeah. do that. But you're absolutely right. Whatever it is that you know rekindles, reconnects you with why you came in the first place. Really important stuff that. Uh, because of this complacency and familiarity that us, the human mind can do, uh, that we do to ourselves. Excellent stuff. Bobby O'Reilly's here this morning. When you live in Portugal, you can always take a trip to Spain. A bit of, bit of contrast as well. That helps, isn't it? And very easy to do so, of course. Yes, um, he so flies all, yeah, he's always flying around the world, but he's suggesting here we might go to Spain or to France for a different experience. And that, I guess, again, you know, it's like absence makes the heart grow fonder. If you get that little trip away, you again that's another way of uh, refreshing your connection to portugal it absolutely it? is we do it all the time and i'll tell you what back to the wine the the thing that makes you appreciate portugal is when you sit down and you casually order a bottle and you don't look at the menu in italy and they bring you the bill and you're like uh, 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 what what <laughs> like, wow and that's yeah. not a compliment <laughs> no, exactly wow yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it brings you back to the love of Portugal quickly when you look at the menus in other countries and things. So yeah, uh, well the said, great well advice, Bobby, that is for sure. Yeah, yeah. good to see you, Bobby. Bobby, some to you. And uh, okay then, so this evening, another webinar to introduce people yes. to the Women in Portugal program. How do people get involved in that, Colleen? The best thing to do is go to our Facebook page. It's right up there. You can go to Portugal, the place. We're going to live stream there and on our platform, so you can pick it up either way. Uh, Come in and out if you have some questions. We're all going to be there and available. But you know what? We're just going to have a conversation and share as women uh, how we've all navigated moving uh, our families, ourselves, what it's like to be a solo woman in Portugal. You know, we definitely have a lot of folks that are reinventing and recreating their lives. So that'd be fun just to put that out there. And don't forget that we have 150 euro uh, early bird discount that is available on your purchase until April 15th. So want to make sure folks get in on that as well. Excellent. Okay. Well, have a great weekend. Bob Vissamana to you. I'll make sure that that link is there to to your website as well. I look forward to speaking to you again. So all the best to the team. Have a great weekend and all the best with this event as well. Cheers. Bye for now. Bye. 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 There she goes. Right. Okay. Uh, There is Women to Portugal. And just one more time here, or maybe I should put that on at the end of the show as well, just to remind you, if you haven't got pen and paper ready now, portugaltheplace.com forward slash women to Portugal. Excellent. Um, Looks like fun. Not something I'll be allowed to go on. Uh, Of course, women only on that trip there. Idioms explained. Thank you, Joao de Nort, for these. Loving that series. Tom's enjoying himself here in Portugal. We spoke to him yesterday, of course, on the show. Things I learned today. Pastéis de Nata are good for breakfast. Of course they are. Did you have some coffee with that, though, Tom? You know, like in Italy, 
I'm not the cappuccino. Uh, although people that are around the rest of the world drink cappuccino for well after meals, which I think raises an eyebrow in Italy. Um, it's the it's the breakfast coffee, isn't it? The cappuccino. Uh, did you have a mea de lait? Did you have a galau with your pastel de nut? Or you you're saying it in the plural there. Very good. So it sounds like you may have had a box full. Um, did you eat a whole six pack? Maybe there, um, Tom. Yes, there's something you can say when you return home from Portugal. I got a six pack when I was in Portugal, you know. Really? Yes, they were delicious. Um, we've embraced the Portugal staycations over the last year. Yeah, and there's so much to see, isn't there, in your first few years anyway. I went to see the daybreak in Nazaré yesterday. It gave me a new perspective on a familiar place. How wonderful. Great idea, Pam. And uh, keep those coming then, um, rekindle. I mean, I know I don't want to sound, you know, for people who haven't even got here yet, it, it sounds like we're really spoiled, doesn't it? Uh, that we're getting complacent. But it is just a feature of the human mind um, to normalize things, become complacent and familiar. And uh, there are things we can do, like Pam just did there yesterday, to go to a, a, a familiar place, but at a new time and see it with new eyes. Fantastic. Yes. Um, what is it? Is it Proust who said that about, you know, there, there aren't, well, well, what's important is not the new landscapes, but the new eyes we might have uh, when seeing them. Uh, so we can see an old landscape in a new way. Bon dia to you, Sarah Yerman. Thank you for being here. And I see that Antonio F is in as well. Ah, it's the ah moment for Jackie, the humble crafter. Hope you got my messages, Jackie. Let's connect. Finally sat with a cup of tetlies and a smoke. And my GMP start to the day, just what I need. I love being part of that. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, it's quite the privilege and honour to be part of your morning routine. And thank you to everyone else who's here and choosing Good Morning Portugal as a way to start the day. And, of course, today, start the weekend. Your bon fin semana. Now, sadly, we had a message from Fenomena. She won't be able to join us uh, this morning. So we'll have a look at the papers. We'll have a bit of fun. It won't get too gloomy and doomy looking at the papers, but we'll see what's going on in Portugal and have a chat about those. And if you want to join me on the screen, um, please. Um, OK, yes, I'll do that, Nuno. Thank you for that message. Um, well done. <laughs> C Duck as well. Rui, thank you for all your questions yesterday about moving, well, not moving, I beg your pardon, not moving, visiting Washington, D.C. Thanks, Gumpers, as well, for being uh, really helpful uh, with that as well. Um, I just need to send a very quick message to um, um, Philomena there. It's just for, bear with me one moment. This is quite important. And uh, thank you very much, Andy, for the picture from 1974. OK, so uh, there we go. And uh, Michael, um, thank you for that as well. How can you be upset with sun sunsets like this? Yes, going to don't go to bed upset. Don't go to bed angry. The sunsets in Portugal really help. So maybe we'll have a few more of those today as well. And we've got Andy's roundup of things to do in Portugal with a point of interest. There. I think we've got Sarah's Sarah Yerman's favorite bakery, uh, which is also on the Gumper map, too. So thank you, everybody, for your images that are coming in on 913-590-303. Much appreciated, especially that sunset. That's beautiful. I'll show that in a minute, um, Michael. Let's make sure we haven't missed out on any comments before we have a look. Uh, to actually, some of the stills as well from the movie premiere. Our next movie is coming out. Uh, Bobby's here. Me and Bobby were in Tamar last year. And uh, we've got the final edit of that premiering tomorrow night at 7 on the YouTube channel as well. So let's just, just relax for a moment. Breathe out. I'm getting very excited this morning. I see that my, um, my assignment, the Portugal language uh, and culture assignment has gone out. Let's make sure we haven't missed anybody in the chat. Camilla, Ruth and um, Nunu from Insurance are joining us this morning as well. Um, that sounds like they're hanging out together in the office. Oh, and realise, says Coach Turner, I meant to say it doesn't matter uh, much what time you exercise, not how much you exercise. Okay, disculpa. No problem. Thank you for clarifying that. Good luck with your hedge trimming and you as well, by Andy. Who's this, I wonder, the Facebook user? What are they sending us? They've got a face mask. They've got... I don't know what a lot of these emojis are. Is there some sort of filthy sexual innuendo? And But it's culminating with taking off in an aeroplane or three aeroplanes. Is that your trip um, expressed as emojis to Portugal? Um, Roy is uh, trying not to crash nor get stabbed in London. Have 
be careful out there. And Carl, um, I've put you on the TV this morning, but you're 15 seconds behind on the telephone. I'd need my telephone free to keep in touch with the Minister of Home Affairs. Of course, yes, they by the time all of this has been squashed into a neatly folded parcel and sent down fiber optic, fiber optic tubes and such, um, that does cause a bit of delay and various delays on different platforms as well. And we miss that bon dia from Tom Smith, who I think is fair to say is having a fabulous time from Ohio here in Portugal at the moment. Bon dia todos from Antonio F. And um, yeah, first thing to do on arrival. Oh, here's another conversational thread then. When you arrived here, when you arrive here, um, when you go away and come back again, what is the first thing you do? And for Pam, of course, here, yeah, just like Tom Smith this morning, nice coffee and a pastel donata. It was, of course, the Imperial, I think. Or maybe Doug had a coffee and a pastel donata early in the day, but look, he's finishing there with um, a wonderful Imperial. And here is Michael's sunset. Now, look at that with a lovely crescent moon there. Let me just take off the um, comments onto the screen. That's beautiful. Yes, it's hard to go to bed angry, isn't it? But I do like that analogy, you know, with um, being with, uh, having having a relationship with Portugal. Don't go to bed angry with Portugal. Figure it out, make an action plan and look at the sunset like that. Michael, that is so beautiful. Uh, absolutely wonderful picture from you on 913-590-303. Okay, uh, who else is here this morning and what is being said in the chat? Christina C, good morning to you. Lovely to see you, Christina. How are you? Uh, Victor Peja is here as well. Bon dia, Portugal, as well with a nice star there. Thank you very much, Vitor, for being with us this morning. Um, Pam, a message for you from Antonio, but don't do it at the airport. Not the best place to do it, nor the best prices. That's true. However, Antonio, still not the ripoff that some international airports are. I think, um, yeah, more expensive than most places, but still um, refreshingly and uh, hearteningly not as a, much of a ripoff as it could be um, at Lisbon Airport. I actually like Lisbon Airport. I know a lot of people don't, but I actually like it there. Um, idioms, ex ex except when I'm flying. <laughs> I suppose I prefer meeting people there rather than using it as a punter. Idioms explain then uh, the first of three messages from Joao de Nort this morning. Loving these. Thank you very much for these, Joao. Back in old England, whilst reusing coffins. No. Some were found to have scratch marks on the inside. Oh, somebody was just drunk. <laughs> Yikes. That is a, that, I mean, talk about worst nightmares. This led to the practice of tying a string on the wrist of the corpse um, and, and through the coffin up to the ground. Oh, so through the lead, through, from the corpse, through the lead of the coffin, um, up through the ground and tied to a bell. Really? Some, I mean, that could be the fright of your life. Not only if you were locked inside a coffin waking up from a heavy drinking session, but if walking past the graveyard to hear bells ringing and realizing you, you've got to dig someone back up. Someone would sit in the graveyard all night, the graveyard shift, there you go, to listen for the bell. We've moved on a bit since then, haven't we? Some say not far enough, but we've moved on a bit since then. Thus, someone could be saved by the bell or be considered a dead ringer. There you go, the dead ringer, the graveyard shift, all explained there with the um, demystification of idioms. Idioms explained, a daily feature, a new daily feature from Joao de Nort. Thank you very much. Morning to you, T-Duck. Good to see you here this morning. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your lie-in. And yes, Pashte Stenata for breakfast for Tom. Nice one. And what's this? We have embraced the Portugal staycations. Oh, yeah, I already read that, but that is a great idea. Where exactly, Michael Barton? Where have you been? And Because you haven't been here long in Portugal. Where did you go uh, for your staycations? I know we've seen you in Coimbra. Where else um, have you been? Good to see you, Sarah Yeoman, this morning. Oh, and we did have pictures um, of the German men, didn't we? With that, um, with the closing down. Oh, and I'm reminded there, I must get that over posted up on the beautiful um, pictures thread over at the Portugal Club. I'm saving your pictures here for when the um, Marginal was closed down and the cyclists took to the street. I bet that was a really nice moment um, to have that to yourselves on that particular day. So just saving those now. And you've also sent me a sunset this morning. So thank you very much for that. If anybody wants to join me on the screen this morning, sadly, Philomena can't make it this morning. But um, if you want to join me and uh, have a chat this morning, I will put the... We can actually ring me. Let me make... Let me um, connect my phone. 
because you might not have your makeup on and you might not want to be on the screen. This happens, doesn't it? Um, and um, you might just prefer to call in like Tom Smith did yesterday. So I'm connecting my phone and you can call me on the, the usual number for sending your pictures and videos, 913-590-303. And I'll also put the link on the screen so that you can uh, join me in full Technicolor as well. Um, if you want to do that between now and 10 o'clock for a bit of Feel Good Friday fun this Friday morning, the 12th of April, just two weeks to go. We're going to talk about the Carnation Revolution with uh, Philomena um, because it's just uh, less than two weeks away, 25th of April, of course. Um, we'll do that on another occasion, I hope. So there's the link. If you want to come and join me on the screen, you'd be very welcome to do so or give me a buzz on 913. 590303. Where did we get to? Ah, we were going to show the pictures of when the Marginal was closed down. Thank you very much uh, for these and your sunset, of course, as well. Let's have a look at your sunset first, Sarah Yemen. The sunset. Oh, that's nice. The sunset over Stubes there with the big ship in the bay at Stubal there. Thank you very much for that. And then the pics of cyclists who took over the Marginal just recently. I think that was about a week ago, wasn't it? Um, nice to do every now and then. Uh, here are the pictures to prove it. The cyclist taking over. Um, this on the section between, uh, oh, you might recognize it. That looks like the footbridge that goes over the Marginal uh, Belang to me. Might be another one, but uh, there you go. They made quite the effort, didn't they? A Lisboa camera to make this happen. And the Yerman fellas there on their bikes and a few other people, a few other cyclists taking to the road and pedestrians as well. Look at that. Um, Mapa de Actividad uh, to participate in that um, event there on the oh it was the 6th of April yeah so there you go um, last week and uh, the Yermans they're having a chat I think with another uh, family of cyclists there so thank you very much uh, for that what a great idea that's probably going to be an annual thing um, I suspect in Lisboa they're closing down a bit of the margin now. What did the motorists do? Did they have to take the long way round? Um, Bondia Carl just returned from an early start in the field, burning some branches. A lot of people are out trimming bushes out in their gardens. How's that rotivating going, Garvo? I was, I was having a laugh with Chinese Terry about you being dragged around a field by a rotivator. How's that going at the moment? Moving to Washington, D.C. Never in my lifetime. I'm fine in Europe. Thank you. Just visiting. My mistake. Holiday visit only. Good to see you here this morning, Rui. And a bit of a reminder from Joao de Nord. If looking for Portugal exploring ideas, come to northern Portugal and Galician Spain to visit dozens of historic Celtic ruins dating to pre-Roman times. Thank you for that, Joao de Nord. Let's um, see if we've uh, covered all the comments. Uh, not had any messages, Carl. Well, we'll deal with that. We'll definitely deal with that, Jackie, today. Don't worry about that. Barack is here, uh, La Bondia from Travanza, and I didn't get round to showing that lovely picture of you with your Gumper mug, the merch uh, that um, you get when you get to a certain level of involvement over at the Portugal Club. Look at you there. Very nice. And that's a very nice background, Barack, there, there in central Portugal. Thank you for that. Um, if you have qualified, to, if you've leveled up to level four and you are due a Gumper mug, just let me know. Antonio, I, I, I uh, realized the other day, did Antonio ever get his mug? Um, I've got more stock. I will send you another one. Um, and forgive me for that being, so, I mean, it wasn't entirely my fault, was it? I think the, the Portuguese postal service might have let you down, but let's make sure you've got, did you get ever get the mug, Antonio? If not, I can stick one in the post to you over the next uh, couple of days there. Video sent from Owen as well. Let's see what Owen sent me. Ah, my Bondia Portugal. So we've got another Bondia Portugal. That's number five, I believe. And we also want your pictures of uh, you in 1974 as well. So thank you very much for that, Andy. That's already come in. A picture of him and his bro uh, from 1974, he says there. And um, Barak, thank you for your picture. Let's return to the framing for just a moment there as we load up Owen's video of a Bondia Portugal on 913. 590303. There we go. Oh no, too many images. Um, let me just uh, move one or two of these. <laughs> Completely constipated um, on the uh, image, uh, over on the image uh, repositories here. And um, I've got lots of videos. I don't even know what they are anymore. Thank you very much for all of them on the 913 590303. Here we go. Here's Owens this morning. 
And I'm going to play a little bit of music as well because uh, we've got the men's shed, the first men's shed coming up next week as well. And uh, we've got Josh playing ukulele, which might be one of the activities actually that they pick up on um, over there at the men's shed here in San Martino de Porto. A fine idea which may be duplicated around uh, other parts and in other communities here in Portugal. Bom dia, Portugal. Slightly different there. Nice approach. Nice, nice, easy going approach to easing in the day. Thank you very much for that, Owen. And um, here we go. Yes, that controversy about 300 days of sunshine. I'm Portuguese. Come to Portugal. We have 300 days of sunshine. Look. 300 days of sunshine. Those rainy days are behind us now, Portuguese. A great fun with you yesterday. Strumming your, <laughs> strumming my face with your fingers. If you could have only have got close enough to do that, I'm sure you'd have tried that on me in an 80s style yesterday, Portuguese. Fortunately, you were a safe distance and played us out with a bit of Common People by Pulp. Um, here, here's another gifted uh, string strummer, or two of them actually from our community. <laughs> Marvellous. Thank you very much, The Don there, and also Josh. I'm going to see if I can download the poster um, as well for the men's shed idea. I did stick a short up. Uh, anyone enjoying the shorts um, that I've been sticking up? Um, sticking up the internet. Ah, here we go. Um, we've got the men's shed of San Martino as well. I might just pop that on the screen um, as a share for you. I have to download that later on. But look, this is what's going on next week. Uh, we'll be talking about quite a few events today. Thanks to uh, Andy, of course, as well, for the smattering of events from up there in the Bayrada district. This is happening in San Martino de Porto uh, next week. We did talk about this before. We had Josh on the show talking about it. Men's Shed of San Martino de Porto. Oficina de, de Homenge, uh, a translation there because there probably isn't a literal one. It's quite a new idea around the rest of the world. A shed is a community space for everyone to create, converse and connect. So it's not just for men, although it is called the men's shed and might be especially useful to fellows who want to meet other chaps who've moved to Portugal here. And uh, there we go. It's at the Casa da Cultura, which is an amazing building here, um, named in honor of uh, Jose Bento da Silva, up the top of the town here in San Martino de Porto. This will be every other Wednesday from 7 until 10 at the Casa da Cultura and Men's Shed SMP at gmail.com if you want uh, more about that. It gets you out of the house to meet new friends and learn a new skill. Is that a dartboard? there as well that sounds like fun okay thank you very much for making that poster josh and everyone's welcome i'll make sure that goes into the san martino de porto grapevine on whatsapp as well and we'll see who turns up next wednesday from seven at the casa de cultura and if you want to repeat that idea elsewhere in portugal i'm sure josh or i can help you with that with the details um, of how to start such a thing fairly straightforward i mean the idea came up and within a few days there it was Poster made, and we'll be getting ready to meet each other next Wednesday. Bon dia, Garbo, from Antonio F. On the matter of 300 days of sunshine, we may have 300 days of sunshine, but we have annual rainfall similar to Wales. Yes, so it's both, isn't it? Not either or, Portuguese. And we had a men's shed group in the village back in the UK. Where I How was it, Garvo? I don't know if you want to join me on the screen to have a chat about that this morning. It'd be nice to talk with you. This is um, a good question, Carl. Around one month from elections, has anything changed for the better? Or po politicians still busy smiling, cutting ribbons, 
drinking coffee. Yes, uh, they'll be doing a bit of that. A bit cynical, Deagle. But then again, you would be. I mean, looking at politics in uh, Northern Ireland, uh, yeah, of course, uh, that would make anyone politically cynical, I'm sure. You haven't had any politicians there for a while, have you? Um, I would say, and I'm talking to... Um, uh, Gilda last night, actually, when I, when I uh, have a quick roundup with the Dream Team and ask them what's going on in their respective uh, industries, their sectors, Gilda on visas, of course, Nunu in, on, on insurance, Daniel on, on the law, and we had Steve from Spartan FX last night talking about currency. Um, when Gilda was talking about what's going on in the world of visas, she was talking about how there is now discussion, official discussion uh, with the politicians on um limiting numbers or qualifying people uh, a little bit more carefully coming into Portugal, but not on the D7 visa. D7 looks like it's going to be untouched. It was more to do with people. And the thing is about a bit of a habit among people to turn up in Portugal and then ask for a work permit. Visas, of course, you're meant to ask for in your country of origin rather than just rocking up to the country, any country in the world, and just asking for a, a visa or a permit to work. That has been happening in Portugal, and it sounds like they might be tightening up on that a little bit, but not too much on the uh, D2, D7, D8 visa end of things uh, from what uh, Gilda was saying last night. So, yeah, they're getting busy. They're talking. I guess they're working out their political affiliations so that they can get law through the parliament and seeing who can work or not work with Shager with their 50 seats is it um so yeah they, they they are beginning to work but nothing obvious yet it's a while isn't it before these discussions get turned into law and make for serious changes in the country so yeah seeing them on the telly um and the new prime minister you know get glad handing pressing the flesh moving around the countryside so they're in position and they'll be thinking about um, the next few months and years, but nothing too significant yet, Deagle, that we're that I'm aware of. Other people might have other comments about that. Uh, thank goodness um, we have uh, we have got that mug. And um, don't, yeah, don't get me wrong, my my bad on that, Antonio F. I got the mug. Carl uh, sent you a pic back then in January. Was it that long ago? I just had suddenly had this shock the other day. Oh my goodness! Did Antonio F. ever get his mug? because the first one didn't show up. There may well be a CTT postman um, drinking out of that somewhere in Portugal as well. Oh, um, a little bit more um, exploring of the idioms. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let me just read these in an in a, a, a efficient order so I don't lose anything um, this morning. Uh, Antonio F., uh, from Jackie, sorry to hear that. Rest up and take it easy. What? Are you not feeling well? Um, Antonio F. Ashmalura, amigo. Um, take it easy. Flu leaves you feeling exhausted. Plenty of fluids and lots of chocolates will be a big help. There you go. Um, Dr. Jackie, the uh, Dr. Crafter there has helped you with a prescription. Lots of love to you, I didn't realize that. So, yes, Ashmalura. And um, Garvo's in, of course, as well. Uh, and had a men's shed in the village where he lived in the UK. I won't join you on the screen because I look like a mad farmer. That's a really good reason to join us on the screen. We want to see that. And uh, more from Gerard de Nort then. Most medieval homes had only dirt floors. Only the wealthy had something other than dirt, leading uh, to the less fortunate being called dirt poor. The wealthy had stone floors that would get slippery when wet, not unlike the calzada ship, of course. So they spread thresh. Thresh, straw on the floor for better for a better footing. As the seasons wore on, they would keep adding a bit like sawdust, isn't it? Keep adding more thresh to keep stop making me say it. Well, uh, they to keep the thresh from slipping out of the door. Yes, a piece of wood or raised stone was placed in the entranceway, a tripping hazard in medieval times, creating what was referred to as a threshold. Very good. And yes, bring on the mad farmer. <laughs> do it, do it. Tomorrow I have the psychological test at the driving school to renew my driving license. Is that something you have to do when you get to 60? Good luck with that. Don't turn up looking like a mad farmer for that one, Garvo. The psychological test. Now, we talked about this last night. The medical test and the psychological test here in Portugal are not intrusive or invasive. <laughs> You don't have to bend over to get your medical for the driving. I don't, hopefully, you don't have to do that anywhere in the world, but certainly you don't have to do that in Portugal. My recollection of, uh, of getting my medical for the driving 
license exchange when I did that a few years ago was um, basically turning up and being able to find the doctor's house and have a conversation with them was enough to prove that you were alive and capable um, medically. So um, good luck with that. I, I, I don't know exactly what's involved in the psychological test, but it's not like you're not going to have loads of those stickers and probes attached to your freshly shaved head to test your psychological output, Garbo which, no offense, uh, might, might come as a relief. Psychological test for a driving license? <laughs> if that was implemented in the UK, no one would get a driving license. I think that's a fair comment. Um, I think maybe in, uh, you are being tested for how fast you might be able to drive in the Portuguese psychological test. That is only a joke, everybody, but then again... Okay, let's have a look at the Portugal news then. We have events to share with you from the Bairada district, thanks to Andy, who sent in the lovely picture of him and his brother. Any others from 1974, please? Uh, let's just have a quick look at that before we have a look at the Portugal news of Andy and the brother, although I can't find it now. So much has come in. Thank you, everybody, on 913-590-303. Come back to that picture of you and your brother and see what else has been sent in. Uh, on 913-590-303. Thank you very much uh, for that. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's uh, 1974. Me and my brother, I'm the long-haired lover from not Liverpool, uh, but Bournemouth there. That is a lovely picture. And uh, the reason we're doing that is because um, ahead of talking about the Carnation Re Revolution, which sadly, Philomena isn't able to do this morning. She had a bit of an emergency at home. Um, she sent in a picture of herself in 1974 before the Carnation Revolution. I love that picture. And um, I was just I, for some reason, I was going to suggest recreating that myself. I don't think I'll be able to get a paisley dress in my size like that. And I imagine Philomena doesn't have that bag to lend me um, anymore either. And look at that. Look at those shoes and the lovely white socks and the handbag there. Fantastic, Philomena. And we'll hold that picture of you after the uh, Carnation Revolution for when you join us on the screen. So let's make sure we do that. Zhao Jackson is here. How are you, Zhao? Um, hola, bon dia, Philomena. Unfortunately, not able to join us except for that photograph that you're seeing on the screen right now. And uh, here's the picture of Andy. Anyone else got a picture of themselves in 1974? Look at that. This is, um, is that you in Bournemouth or Portsmouth or somewhere like that? There is a ship in the background there. That's Andy and uh, his brother there. Whilst here in Portugal, the Carnation Revolution was soon to happen. I, I bet you didn't think or know anything about that um, in those days. Uh, carefree on the beach there. Possibly walking on water. Skills uh, right there. Thank you for that. Any more pictures of yourself in 1974? If you can find one, 913-590-303. That could be hilarious, uh, seeing pictures of Gumpers from 1974. Okay, I'm going to bring onto the screen now the Portugal news. Let's have a look at those um, headlines. And let's, let's have a look at some of the more feel-good stuff. I know our eye is always drawn, or mine is anyway, um, towards the more gloom and doom negative stuff. Oh, Garvo's telling us, every five years I have to renew because of my bus and truck categories. You look at a screen, hear noises and see colours and press buttons. Okay, um, you look at a screen, hear noises, see colours and press buttons. That's what I do every morning here, like this. Friday. Yes, I can do that. So does that mean I've passed the last psychological test, I, I wonder? Okay, Portugal News then. Let's see what they're saying. We'll have a look at the Portugal resident, the resi as well this morning. But let's start with the Portugal news. Oh, break dancers are coming to Portugal. If you like that sort of thing, you'll be glad to see this. And uh, let's find out a bit more about this. Red Bull uh, seem to have extended their tentacles. Yes, I said tentacles into, although break dancing, extending of the tentacle uh, best breakers competing in Porto Red Bull BC one cipher Portugal. What is that? What did I just say? Red Bull BC one cipher Portugal is ready to put the test put to the test. The best of breakings international talent. That fella there looks like he's about to break himself. The top breakers in the nation will participate in the Red Bull BC One Cypher Portugal 24. What? A national final at Hard Club venue in Porto. 
The emblematic venue will accommodate on Saturday the 13th of April the Breakers, who will attempt to win the national title and earn a spot in the Red Bull BC1 World Final in Rio de Janeiro, where there will be eight B-girls and 16 B-boys fighting in the Portuguese round of the most significant international breaking tournament. Did a little bit of that myself back in the day, bit of cardboard from behind the skip, spin on your head and hurt yourself between lessons at college. Loved the music. I loved the music in those days, the early electro and hip-hop music. The event will be open, uh, opening its doors at 5 p.m., and the competition itself is scheduled to start at 6.30. That's an early start here in Portugal. The national final, which is free to the public to enjoy, will be evaluated by the trio. B-Boys found Kid and Ronnie and the B-Girl Valentine. The national winners will then be representing Portugal in the Red Bull BC1 World Final on the 7th of December 2024 in Rio. How about that? You really want to see video, don't you? Have we got some video? Look at the incredible image, though. That's the hard club there. And that does look like an amazing venue, the hard club at Porto there. But no video for us and no pithy, um, sarcastic comments on that particular article on the Portugal News. Let's see what else they're talking about over there. Um, probably not psychological, more like mental acuity then. Uh, Joao de Nort responding to... Uh, Gar Garvo's comment there about his test that he's doing for his bus and truck categories, which means he can still drive us around in a coach, I suspect, if it comes to it. The Carnation Revolution was actually the military wanting better conditions uh, in their bases and against the overseas wars. Yeah, I was watching an amazing, Gloria, the amazing film. Thoroughly recommend that. I'll be saying more about that in the coming days and weeks. The, the film, um, is it Manuel de Oliveira? who made that movie. It's really good. I've been watching it in sections because I watch it so late at night. I've been watching sort of 20 or 30 minutes at a time. But really good insight into the colonial wars and the appetite or not for it as, as the run-up in history happened towards the Carnation Revolution. It was not to overthrow the government. So it started with a different intention and then ended up overthrowing the government. People were ready for that. Um, the public fearful of the military, took the Carnation as their weapon of peace, standing with the military after learning they were not against the general public, but wanted better conditions. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Something they need to implement in the USA to qualify for running for president. <laughs> yeah, come on. It's true, isn't it? I mean, I saw a Joe yesterday with some foreign visitors. It's embarrassing. Come on, whatever your political persuasions, I mean, Joe Biden is, is, is just, I mean, what is going on there? Um, but yes, the mental acuity test for presidents too. I would agree in this particular instance. I mean, Rishi Sunak, I'm no fan of him. Um, he's got a different thing going on. He's sharp. You've got to give him that, especially his little suits. Um, but um, there needs to be all sorts of testing for people. Do you know what? It's probably the, psych, not a psychological test, but a psychopathic test, um, a narcissism test to make sure that people aren't going into politics for nefarious reasons but that's a silly idea what other reasons would people generally go into politics for a lot of them anyway i know there are there are notable exceptions to that some, there are some great people who truly want to do good in politics but look what happens to them when they get near the top um i yeah, they can barely walk or talk anymore i tried telling them that i came from birmingham so i didn't need a psychological test because i had survived deep trauma already he weren't impressed by that. I'd love to have been there. I can imagine the soundtrack to that particular quip in the um, where's me, where's me tumbleweed? Come here. Um, where are you? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Let me do that again. Um, so um hola, bon dia. Senor Austin, you've come for your psychological test. I won't be needing that. I grew up in Birmingham, I've already survived deep trauma. There you go. Did I re oh this is them standing behind me quite scarily there um is that a coffee for me no, i'd love a coffee you're st are you standing there with an empty cup pranking me i'd love a coffee thank you very much okay uh where are we um the so yes the third section of this um mini mini presentation about the carnation revolution thanks is that a cat all right <laughs> that sound you just heard was a cat having its tail trodden on. They do get under your feet. Why do they do that? You'd think after years, uh, millions of years of evolution with cats, they wouldn't stand in your way like that and get trodden on. The people started, uh, why is your cat called Trex? 
it's too rude to tell that joke right now. Um, the people started looking, asking for a better life, changing conditions, and this led to six governments over two years. Yes, turbulent times after the Carnation Revolution. And men's sheds were where you compare tools and marvel at each other's techniques and drink beer. That may well happen in San Martino de Porto next Wednesday. Not connected, they in truth failed as they used a sieve to empty a bucket of water, not a ladle. The right idea, and it went about it wrong like most uprisings. Yeah, I mean, tumultuous times. You can understand why there were so many governments in such a short space of time. But thank you uh, for those to those people um, who led the way to democracy here in Portugal. And we'll be celebrating the 50th anniversary of that on the 25th of this month. Now, Pam has very kindly picked up and run with the link on the screen and joins me now. I'm assuming that's what you wanted to do, Pam. Hola, bon dia. Yeah, hello. On the screen, Pam. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Yeah, very well. Very well. Sorry not to see Philomena this morning, but you yeah. might be teaching a little bit of language and culture this morning, I suspect. Oh, uh, I'm not, not up for teaching the language. I'm just like you, just encourage people to learn. Yeah, I realised that the other day. I'm not a teacher, and I'm. A, I, it's a matter of public record that people shouldn't have me as their teacher. Although but... it is a good way to learn is to teach yes! what you know to others because exactly. it reinforces what you've learned already. Yeah, yeah. Just I, I, make sure that you only teach what you sure you know, and <laughs> don't teach the wrong. Yeah, it's, you're right. It's difficult. Um, it's difficult to to do that and be yes. critical of yourself and your limitations. Yeah, well but, said. Well done you for doing right. it. Yeah, and and I'm I'm with you on that. I don't teach. Um, I, I I encourage people to learn really, and and it's very important to do so. As I know you're 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 a big advocate of, of picking up the language and running with I it. I am, and I wanted to give a, a little bit of a a backstory of why I'm so happy to have learned Portuguese. Go um, on. Just because, I mean, I don't. I was surprised by how motivated I was the first few years I was here. I just spent. Mm. I went to every available lesson, did homework, did everything, did lots of study, went to refood to immerse myself and learn the language. Yeah. And last year I was actually ill and I needed an operation. And um, I was in hospital for five days. And in that circumstance, you're on your own. There's no, you can't ring an interpreter. You can't expect the doctor to speak English or the nurse or whoever you need to speak to. And it would have been so, it was quite stressful, but it would have been much more stressful had I not been able to communicate with the people and know what was going on. Right. And I've heard lots of people say that in the hospital scenario, nobody tells you anything. And I wonder if it's because they think you don't understand and they're just, time's limited. They've not got time to explain everything in English. So I actually did get explanations all the way along. The doctor spoke to me and explained everything that was going on. And it was, I was so happy <laughs> to understand it and to be able to ask him the questions that I had. And also I spent five days in a room, just two patients in a room with another mm. lady from Lusa, a lovely lady. And she's a lifelong friend now. Oh, how wonderful. Her son lives in Manchester. She didn't speak any English, we spoke in Portuguese, but you really bond in that scenario where you're stuck in a chair and you can't move. Neither of us yes, can. What else can you do? Yeah. And we really chatted a lot and it really passed the time. It would have been so, so difficult. That time would have been so long without that. Without, she was a lovely person, which helped. You know, you might not get that, but just being able to converse with her and talk about things and, yeah, it was just so nice to be able to to do that. Mm. And it's not about showing off that you can conjugate your verbs correctly. It's about communication. And yeah. <clears throat> I think when it comes down to it, there's a, a point when we're all on our own in this. And it's leaving it to your partner and leaving it to someone else, ringing interpreters is fine for some things, but... It's you on the margins of your life here if you don't immerse yourself in the language to to an extent that you can actually communicate with people. So <clears throat> I just wanted to share that little story to say why I think it's so important. To yeah, learn. absolutely. And I don't know uh, the, the the word the correct word isn't exponential, but it's it's it, it's like that in a way that it goes it, it it can be quite extreme. So if you don't learn any 
I think you're going to find yourself in more and more difficult situations. And if you learn some and you engage and you immerse and you take a pleasure in learning and the more you learn, that has a, that has a different exponential direction of travel, doesn't it? I think uh, it, it's, 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 it's like compounding interest, isn't it? And it's, it's either spiraling up or spiraling down. A point when you're learning that it just keeps getting harder. Yeah. It gets harder. There's, you see there's more and more to learn that you still don't know. Yeah. But there is a point when you have breakthrough moments when you can answer the phone without stressing about it, when you can just have a conversation and not know if it was in English or Portuguese. It's like, did I speak to him in English or Portuguese? I is that what you've got to? Is that your... Yeah. Your, there are some that, people that I know speak English and sometimes I speak to them in English and sometimes Portuguese. And it's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what language we spoke. Because that's just, wonderful. Like, Oh, so give us a few more of those breakthroughs then. I mean, the phone is a very important one, isn't it? Because yeah. I, I, I was at the meetup on Wednesday and I was in that situation where um, one of the people at the meetup had a delivery driver because that's that's a very common scenario, isn't it? The delivery driver will ring you up. Right. And it's very difficult to grasp what they're saying because, you know, they'll be a, you know, they're in a hurry. They do, assuming you're going to speak Portuguese, they speak Portuguese at full pelt, full speed. Like, where are you? I've got your parcel. And... Um, Gene just said, you speak Portuguese, you speak to him. I was like, ah! And I, I panicked, honestly. Yeah, I get phones thrust at me fairly yeah. regularly. Yeah, and I, and I, and I, I, I tried my best, and, and I, you know, I was saying, you know, can you leave it by the door? And it wasn't happening. So I did my best, and I was quite proud of myself from that point of view, but a little bit disappointed as well because that we didn't get a conclusive result. And then what happened was she said, Cafe Palmeira. And then it was like, oh, okay. And the guy drove to the cafe <laughs> to yeah. bring the parcel to the cafe. Well, they usually a after, after is a, a really specific explanation of where your house is. So yes. as soon as they've got somewhere they know, they're onto it. But yeah, they want to they want to get rid of the parcel, don't they? So this yeah. this person, it was lovely that you know, it's like, almost like a round of applause and cheering of this this driver <laughs> um, arriving. But the, that yeah, the telephone thing is is very important and that would i can see how that'd be a massive milestone for people because you're losing a lot of the uh, context for communication aren't you when it's yes. on the phone it's just the voice and it's just you and the person talking it's like it's the like, pandemic when we all had masks on it yeah yeah really and you can't good. mime you can't if when, you, when you start miming on the phone i mean it makes you look more portuguese to be gesticulating while you're on the phone but the other person actually cannot see that <laughs> that that's a great milestone not knowing whether you're speaking portuguese or english is another mm. great milestone what other situations have you found yourself in, apart from hospital, of course, which you described so beautifully, where you thought, OK, all that hard work has paid off? I like it when people, when Portuguese people ask me for directions, when they stop you in the street and say, do you know where this is? And it's somewhere that I know and I can direct them to it. Like, brilliant, brilliant. Because, like, just... they pull up, they pull up in the car and they're going to ask directions, look at me, think, oh, no, she's a foreigner. Yeah, it's done a I'm going to have to ask. So they ask and then it's like, oh, what? she actually does speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows where to go as well, more to the point. Fantastic. So yeah. it's that look on people's faces when they look at you like, do you understand me? It's like, oh, you do. That relief you see <laughs> in them. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> although a lot of people speak English, a lot of people speak basic English and they mm. would rather speak Portuguese. And and yeah. I, I would also rather that, in, especially in like a medical situation or serious situations, mm. because... I know my level of Portuguese. I don't know their level of English. If there's going to be a mistake, I'd rather it was my mistake. Like yes. numbers, particularly like six and 16, a lot of Portuguese people mix them up, which can be important. <laughs> Hold on a minute. They mix them up. Even they Portuguese. sound very similar in English. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Because I. In English. Yeah. I, I, the teen I, and the T sound very similar. Yeah. And I, um, I went to double check. I booked the kids some haircuts the other day. And the the lady said, "Tresh," and ah, I, yeah. yeah. And I walked back in. And I said, "Is it tres or tres? You know, are we talking twenty four hour clock?" And and that could, I mean, you know, that could yeah. mean you losing your your slot or being two hours early. I actually a while ago I made that mistake at Refood because the beneficiaries there are given a number that is their number, and we yeah. know B three is a single person, so I just make up food for one. B thirteen is a family of five, so make up a big pack of food for a family of five. Yeah. And early on, I misunderstood and gave the single man, the family of fives, bag of food. 
They, that was good for them, but not. That was good for him. He, he ate well oh, that day. You? The family <laughs> not so well. We had to scrabble around when I realised and uh, give them some more. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We've got a question for you. Um, we've got the OLP in Linda. Good to see you. And Squire of the Shires also in this morning. Thanks for joining me on the screen, Pam. How long have you been in Portugal? Nine years. Nine years ago. And you nearly ended up in Tamara, am I right? Or somewhere else in Portugal? Well, we had a house near Tamara for 10 years before we moved here in a little village called um, Almogadel. Mm -hmm. um, it was really nice for holidays, but when we moved, it was too quiet. We're, we're townies. We're not country people. Right. So we we did think of moving to Tamar, but we also looked we looked at some places. Um, we decided to look nearer the coast. Found Alcabasa, found this apartment where we are now, and um, loved it. Rest, moved rest here, rest rest it. Yeah, and you we really do think... love Tamar though. We go there a couple of times a year. Yes, I'm going for the. Um, they've got some living statues for the 25th of April celebrations. I'm going to go to that. Oh, so Le Lena might be there. Lena Selwyn. Lena, Lena's in it, yeah. She's, she's great, isn't she? Yeah. So you might recognise some of these views then. Maybe not that one, uh, <laughs> yeah. especially <laughs> there. We, our, our premiere of our Tamar film happens. Garvo's in that, of course, and uh, Terry's also in that. Uh, let's see if you recognise any of these other shots. You'll know this street, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a... a, a I'm not a sight you see every day, but um, the... it's not that rare in Tamar. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but not they're not usually brummies, are they? Dressed like no. That. Okay, there they are with Veronica and Sarah of Spartan FX. There, um, there's me and Bobby drinking outside. A lawyer's, as it turned out, she came back into her shop while we were drinking beer outside. Then she's part of the film as well. So that's coming out uh, seven o'clock tomorrow evening in beautiful Tamar, which it sounds like. Uh, you still love and um, popping back to there. Yeah, we do. Nine years, Pam. How long is it? I mean, so it is nine years that it's taken you to get to this level of Portuguese proficiency as well then? I'd say it took four years to be comfortable. Right, okay. Speaking. I haven't really done any study since the pandemic. I was okay. doing a course at that time that got cut short. Uh -huh. um, I do my chat club. I don't do any studying, really. I just speak to people. So any any further study you do now will be finessing and it would be like a Portuguese person taking a, a you know further grammar, presumably. Or a, a... I do feel like I need to brush up on the thing that I still struggle with is masculine and feminine. Right. Okay. Some there are some words that I could can never remember if they're masculine or feminine. So okay. I need to um there's actually a really good video that I've not got around to watching, but it's really good. It's the sounds of Portuguese. Adelina has done a really good video on this that i'm going to watch um well, that's something a portuguese person might struggle with as well right because we this point gets made from time to time by teachers that you know not even portuguese people have cracked their language to the highest level it's, there are still yeah. mistakes made and i don't speak english perfectly so. yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah i mean you know a few of us do right so that is an unreasonable expectation but i think the point you're making is we could certainly do a lot more than we um are currently doing many of us yeah, I feel like I've got a little bit lazy. Like, I can speak, I can communicate, I can make myself understood, I can understand everybody. Yes. But I do make mistakes all the yeah. time. Yeah. I'd like to iron out those mistakes, but I'm, I keep making the same mistakes. Mm. So I need to do something to iron those out now. Um, and Portuguese people, as I as I understand it, as I've experienced, are very accommodating of those mistakes as well, right? They'll teach you, they'll support you, they won't uh, mock you for, for, for that. Some will mock you. I mean, <laughs> if you know you well. The guys yeah, okay, that refood but, but sometimes a mock me. Anyway, right? I've had everybody laughing at me in refood meetings before now. I bet, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's just, um, yeah, that's that's. I had a good one the other day. I, I got banter. to my theatre class early. I normally try and get there late. And um, I wanted to say I've arrived early. I arrived early. I'm yeah. early. So I said, do, say do. And Mary looked at me. She said, what? I had no clue what I was saying. I said, say do. But I know this is the right word. Say do. And um, Cipriano explained to me that no, you're not late. You're not early and you're not late. You, you would say, she gay, say do. I arrived early. You would never use the word I am. Right. I am early doesn't exist. It's not. A, it's just the wrong way of saying it. And I didn't know. I knew you didn't say I'm late because that means you're dead. I'm the late. Great. 
<laughs> that will give people a shock. But I didn't know. Yeah. No, you could say if you're a ghost, I suppose. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I didn't know it was the same for early. Yes. It is. So that, I still learn yeah. stuff, and I, and I think I'm learning it in the in the, the situation where somebody's staring at you blankly, going, "What are you talking about?" It kind and of. There, but that really the, therein lies the cultural linguistic connection because the two can never be separated, can they? You learn about the language, then you learn about the people and the way they think. There is no. Is that? Am I right then in thinking there is no way of being late in Portuguese, and that's why we have the uh, time. You can use the same. You can use cheguei, cheguei, right. atrasada. Yes. Okay, but you arrive late. You don't. You don't. You don't judge yourself as being late. No. That, that's a cultural insight, right there, isn't it? <laughs> Everyone's late, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. why I was early because I was actually on time and no one else was there. <laughs> I normally set off at the time that I'm meant to be there, but um. I'd there actually set off early to get there on time. Yes. How old fashioned and, and, and anti cultural of you to be doing so. Uh, what's the name of the video? Adelina, did you say? Yeah. Um, the Sounds of Portuguese is her YouTube Sounds channel. Sounds of Portuguese. Okay. She's really go. good. That's for she's, you. Um, she's from the Algarve, but she's got a really nice Irish accent and she speaks English. Really? So she's yeah, Algarvian really nice. and she, oh yes, there are a lot of Irish people in the Algarve, aren't there? So maybe she's got an Irish husband. Could be, could yeah, be. I think she grew up there yeah. or something. I can't remember the full story. Yes, okay. But that, I, yes, that's worth listening to. Put, uh, English in an Irish accent. She's got a really nice, she's been on our chat club a few times. She's really oh, nice. Oh, brilliant. Okay, excellent. Now you said something I wanted to, to, to pick up on about um, it gets it gets harder. It, you, there are these moment crises, you know, it, it actually gets worse before it gets better you make some progress then you hit a wall people should expect that how have you dealt yeah. with that you just get through it it's just putting the hours in i think yeah just okay. um learn the grammar but try and use it as well yeah um so once you start learning you you initially start learning the present tense and then you start learning the past tenses there are two of them and then you start learning the imperfecto the the perfecto and the imperfecto, the perfect and imperfect past, and the imperative, and then there's the passive voice, and then you hear about the subjunctive, and then you're wondering about the future tense. Are you ever going to study that? No one ever wants to teach you that. Why are they not teaching you that? Is it scary? Um, but what is the answer to that? The answer to that is that you use the verb ir and the infinitive. Going to. Generally, I'm going yes. to. Okay. This. Yeah. And actually, the future tense, when you do learn it, it is used sometimes. It's not that difficult. It's just another thing to learn. So it's just um, like the conjugations of the past tense. It's just getting them in your memory. You can actually sit down and cram them. I cram them for the exam, for the simple exam. Okay. So, And, and what I'm, what's, I'm aware of and, and, and what my current thinking on this is, is that, of course, all of those things are important, but people do have their enthusiasm... Uh, and will um, uh, uh, killed by going too much into the technicalities yeah. and not doing enough of the connecting. And that's why we're doing this 28 day thing. It's just, it's to get people yeah. taking baby steps every day to connect. Cause again, that's like a, a compound interest thing. If you're yeah. here for weeks, months, years, and you haven't been connecting, your confidence will drop. Uh, and even people who, I think someone said this on the course last, they did. Someone said this on the, on the webinar last night. They've done a, a really intensive two day a week course in Portuguese. They said it's all gone in, but it never comes out. Now yeah. that's something, something's going wrong there, isn't it? If you've no I a think lot a lot of classes that people do, you don't get much chance to speak. If it's a group class in a classroom, they go around the class. If you're lucky, they do this, they go around the class and everyone answers a question. If there's 30 people, you're gonna say two sentences in a class. Right. Excellent. And then it will be cerebral, intellectual and technical. And the important thing, I think, and that's what I'm encouraging at the moment, is to get I out think there. A good way to get yourself speaking is to just learn some stock phrases. Yes, the, yes. The things that you do and listen to the responses that you get that will be the same often. Yeah. And then try and catch the words that people are saying and look them up and try and really understand what people are saying to you. And then as you study the grammar, understand why they're saying it that way. Are they saying the past tense, 
present tense. And learning the grammar on its own doesn't really make much sense. It has to be... Right. Context. You, and you need to go out there and make a fool of yourself, basically. You need to just yes. try it. And that because is you don't realise until you try to express yourself about something that you can't do it. Right. And that's what we do in chat club. Um, we just speak. And we, we all make mistakes. And it's like, oh, I just realised I don't know how to say that at all. Yes. And no until need to take that Until you try to say it in a yes. real situation, you don't realise that you don't oh. know how to say it. And then you can go away and study that. So it's yep. not a lesson and it's not... No one's expected to be perfect. A lot of people are reluctant to come along because they think, oh, my Portuguese isn't good enough. It's like, yeah. that's the reason to go. <laughs> exactly, um, exactly. Uh, yes, so we may have we may have stumbled upon the Smith-Munson method of learning Portuguese this morning, which is definitely, and I'm glad this is what I'm doing. I'm suggesting people do the most basic of things, like an hola, bon dia, boa tarde, boa noite, and listen to the response. Yeah. You know, be, be particularly mindful. And then the feedback you get in, 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 the, in, in the loop of everyday life, in the immersion class that is living in Portugal, is, of course, there are things you won't understand. And not to take that mm -hmm. personally, not to be too disappointed, but that gives you your homework, doesn't it? What was yeah. it that person just said? And those and then, things like they say at the till in the supermarket, like, do you want the factura con contribuent? That's quite a difficult word. It is. Um, but if you listen to it, I mean... I think people listen to it and then, oh, what are they saying? And then the next time they know what they're saying, so they just uh, give them the right. or say no. Yes. Or do you want a bag? Just no. They just say no to everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if you actually listen to what, how they're saying it, the words they're using to say that, it can be a good learning experience because, you know, they might say it slightly differently or they might say, have you got the loyalty card for whatever yes. supermarket or whatever? Um, it is those three things, Pam, isn't it? It's the loyalty card, the NIF, and the, a bag. And that is. I was in Pingo Dose once, and they had this offer on that um, if you spent 50 euros, I think you could get 10 euros worth of meat for free. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm vegetarian. It's not really worth it. Um, <laughs> but at the tail, she, she was looking at me saying, Do you understand Portuguese? Because it's quite a complicated thing to explain. Yeah, yeah. So she was just not going to bother if I didn't. So yes. somebody could have got not got a tennis worth of meat who could have done because very interesting. That. Well, there there are those of us. I was talking to Heather earlier on this week from Boots on the Ground, who say yes to everything rather than no to everything. So we're going to end up with bags. We're going to end up with having to give our our, our nif. Um, so yeah, the, the, those that's that's the problem, isn't it? Is like just going resorting to a habitual no or yes means that you might not um, extract the juice of the conversation. And that's why I'm Yeah, recommending... you're never going to move on if you don't engage with what the actual things that people are saying. Superb, superb. Well, Pam, thanks so much uh, for joining us this morning. You're we welcome. weren't able to speak to Philomena, but that was really helpful. Thank you so much. You are, you've are you always been a beacon to me and an inspiration with how you've applied yourself to learning the language, not only learning it, but applying it in that voluntary situation at ReFood as well. Yeah, and I'd say that I'm not, a person that finds it particularly easy to learn languages. I right. I put in about 500 hours of study to get to the stage I was at in Portuguese. Oh, okay. Well, okay. And that's a lot. You know, it's like doing one course, you're not going to get it. One, one year of A1, A2 in the school isn't going to get you there. You need to do like three or four times that. And, it's a, it's and, a open mouth, and open your mouth in public and engage. That is, I mean, that's it. Whatever it takes, I, I think it's important to. That's where you learn the most from real people. Yeah, absolutely. and listen to people. Like I, I'm lucky. I live in quite a busy place. I can sit on the balcony and listen to people's conversations. Well, um, I've seen you, you and and those uh, arvos doing that in Portugal. It's very traditional, Pam. Yeah. But it's really good because you. There's a clinic, or there was a clinic downstairs from me, and there's a hairdresser. So it's a place where people bump into each other where they've not they've not seen each other for a while. So yeah. it's all the, oh, how are you doing? What have you been up to kind of chat? Yeah, yeah very Which good. is really useful for catching how people actually say these things. Okay, so can you of... people can people rent your balcony and come and sit there and learn Portuguese? <laughs> no. Okay, you all can right. sit at the laundrette downstairs. Okay, yeah, go to the laundrette, go to shops, go to cafes. It's another good reason to go to the cafe. Well, just the... listen, just listen in the cafe and 
go in and listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cheers, Pam. All the best okay. to Tony. Have a great week. Um, Portuguese course. Um, we'll see how it goes. We're enjoying it so far. We're only a day in, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right. All the best. Ciao, okay. ciao. Okay. See you. Okay. Bye for now. Let's go, Pam. Joining us. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, Pam, for that. In the last few minutes then, or last minute, let's have a look at these wonderful events that have been sent our way by Barandi. More culture here, more language, of course. The big news is the Aviro Craft Beer Festival from the 3rd to the 5th of May. And that's at the Mercado Manuel uh, Fermino uh, Mercado Center there, uh, in which is right in the middle of Aviro, basically very close to the train station. That's a great reason to go to uh, Aviro, if you like beer, uh, that is. Um, also from Philomena, this uh, Grand Premio Bujos in Miranda de Corvo. So a walking event there in uh, MDC, where, of course, uh, Philomena is based, and a festival, a festival de Sopos on the 13th of April. That's tomorrow. Um where would Portugal be without its soup festivals? There you go. You can get your belly absolutely full of soup and more. Uh, for the seven soaps um, opening up at uh, eight o'clock in the evening there. Um, and that will be, is that in Mayash? I don't know. That's maybe a village near to Miranda de Corvo. Uh, let's have a look at some of Andy's offerings. These are all over on the Gumper map. And find the Gumper map at goodmorningportugal.com. Carnation Revolution concert there. So things are starting to heat up with attention um, and celebration of the Carnation Revolution. There you go. Great poster as well. Uh, the Voice of Liberty. Uh, that's Mamarosa, a lovely little village in uh, Bay the Bayerada district. There's uh, Pernil, no espeto spit roast there in Arinos, yeah, Ventosa do Bayro. Uh, all of these, the Bayerada region, if you want to put your events up, you can do that. It's um, user-created content over there on the Gumper map, a little bit of nice little bit of technology from Google, an evening of food and fado in Pedralva, a noite de fado there. Repeat after me. Come on, let's do this. Um, a day out in Ponte de Vagos in Bairada there. That's um, a biker event off-road uh, for you there, if you like that sort of thing. Free sports conference in Agada. Trail running is the key to success, and that will be the topic there. If you're a trail runner, you might like to make a trip to the Bairada for that in the lovely town of Agada. The Tapada Nacional de Mafra, beautiful nature reserve, lots of old growth. That's a highlight a bit further south there. Uh, Sarah might have put that up on the map for us. And the Celtic ruins of, the, where is this then? This is up north. Who did this one? Uh, Celtic ruins of Sitania in Santa Luzia, the amazing remains of a Celtic settlement dating back to the Iron Age over 3,000 years ago. I reckon Joao de Nort's been up there. He may have added that for us. Overlooking the viewpoint, the overlook viewpoint of Mirador de San Antonio uh, near Vigo. These are, I think these are John's. Um, Zay Povino by Bordalo, a Belgian triple beer. Um, that's a little video. These are nice highlights. Thank you very much, Andy, for sharing these with us. Uh, that takes us towards Caldas de Reña, that one. The Passadizos de Paiva, the trailhead at Areña, one of the best walks in Portugal, says Andy, along the side of the river Paiva. Amazing boardwalk there for you at uh, Paiva. And a couple more then before we go into the weekend. Farol de Aveiro, the highest Portuguese lighthouse at 62 metres uh, and 66 metres above sea level. Do the math! Um, and uh, the geographical centre of Portugal. All of these things on our Gumper map, the highest lighthouse and the geographical centre there. In where is that? Uh, Villa de Rey, of course, yes. Uh, we, I think we've got a video of that, haven't we, from way back. Snack bar Rui. If you fancy a few beers and some traditional Portuguese grub with some proper geezers, get yourself down here, says Andy. The food spot on, the beers go down great. So you could be advertising your local favourite cafe. Spill your beer and they charge you double. Says Andy there. Musee José Luciano Castro. Fantastic hidden gem of a museum. We've been a few times uh, and I've enjoyed that in Anadia in Bayerada. Great place to visit. As I say, every time I talk about the Bayerada, but I have very fond memories of being there. Paul Dos, this is Sarah's favorite bread bakery. And if not for Sarah, he wouldn't have this Gumper map. They make other stuff too, but the bread is just outstanding in Satuwal there. And finally, um, party, party in Santa Joana Aveiro, 
that's uh, happening on this well this with this weekend tomorrow and the 14th uh, very good thank you very much in, in uh, santa joana there in the aveiro district great work andy thank you very much for those let's have a look at a, far, a last few comments then make sure we haven't ignored everybody probably comments coming in about the language uh, and the conversation just had with pam there I went to the local steel fabricator to ask if I could have an item made, showed him my plans and talked about what I needed. All in Portuguese. Nice one, Gary. Felt rather pleased with myself. It's those moments that are marvellous. Um, so well done, mate. And you, for you, uh, definitely you deserve some of this, my friend. Muito bem. Yeah, great job, Gary, says OLP. We'll see if my wishes were understood or if I'm going to end up with something like a six-foot bottle opener. Oh, you haven't seen the end result yet. Keep us posted on that. Um, I think this might be Pete. I thought the nights got shorter later in the year, but it appears that in Tamar they are getting shorter already. Cheeky. And um, smash that like button. Cheers, T-Duck, for being here this morning. Go to the local cafe, says Garvo. Sit, watch, listen, and get recognised and familiar. Try and pick up a few words you might recognise and build on that. Baby steps, seriously. Baby steps. Not sure how you feel in Portugal. What's this then? What have I have I missed loads here? Um, time is a myth. Uh, time in Portugal is a myth. D lunchtime doubly so. And long may it continue. The lunchtime tradition here is so important. Um, 25th of April, story Zeca, the guy who wrote Grandola, lived in Setubal, taught music here. He was known for leaving his car a lot because people might need a place to sleep. And folks did. Wow, how lovely. Um, are you Portuguese citizen now with your own passport? Not sure. I forgot to ask you that. Sorry about that, OLP, but she'll be back. In the UK, people say my English is excellent when they want to be nice and do pleasantries. In others, they say my English is terrible or not good enough when they have an interest in putting me down. I don't like the sound of that, Rui, and I'm sorry to hear that, that my fellow Brits do that to you. Not sure how you feel in Portugal. Generally speaking, very, very welcome and very supported whenever I try and speak Portuguese in Portugal and people want to help. It's a great country to do that. It's not like being in France or the UK from that point of view. Don't worry, Rui, you're going to DC. I've never stopped to count how many languages I've heard there, says Sarah. And here in the USA, we hear and see Spanish the most. So I always try to use the Spanish language words. Cheers, OLP. Thanks for being here this morning. And I started learning, says Sarah. Um, I was quite aware when this was learning Portuguese, I was quite aware that I was slightly above the level of houseplants. <laughs> now, I believe I'm at least ambulatory, not fully human yet, but getting there. Well done, Sarah. That is, I mean, it's amazing. Um, you know, a little bit of progress every day, getting into having a bit of accountability, you know, doing some stuff and suffering the highs and the lows, celebrating the highs dealing with the lows, using it as feedback, and moving on. Absolutely. Uh, great show, Carl. Thank you, OLP. And in Mafra, there are two tapadas, the national and the military one, where the military trained. They are adjacent. Thanks, Antonio F. And ciao, bellas. Ciao, bellas. Have a great weekend. A bon fin semana. And thank you all. Have a fabulous weekend. Thank you for being here, hanging out. We were sorry not to see Philomena this morning. Sorry if I've overlooked any comments uh, that have come in. But I think we got to most of them, and I really appreciate you being here um today this friday this feel good friday and i wish you the the bombest of bon fin semanas uh have a happy and great weekend and we'll see you on monday here's a round of applause no it's not that's the f sorry we can't take another phone call here's a nice round of applause for you got sort that out somehow haven't i have a great weekend dear friend and yeah as i say we'll see you on monday bye for now ciao ciao